So maybe we can start. It's 9.30-ish. Um, so welcome to the Combined Africa, Yemen, Next Gen uh, Brief-based workshop. So we have um, three presenters today. I, I will start um, and I will talk about some basics of the site that most of you probably already know. So I'll, I'll just go through it fairly quickly. Uh, and then we have Prasad presenting um, uh, through Zoom uh, about uh, some of the management functions, so how to create trials and genotyping plates and so forth. Um, and at the end, uh, Isaac will present um, the analysis tools, uh, some of the analysis tools on the site. Uh, and so we have kind of a hard cutoff at noon uh, when we'll have to go for lunch. And in the afternoon, there is uh, uh, the visit to the, to the labs and to the breeding center. Um, so we have to, we have to finish at, at, at lunchtime. Um, so people are still coming in. So this was going to be, um, I was asking for a full day workshop and then it got reduced to a half day workshop and they got reduced to a two hour workshop <laughs> and they got extended a bit to a two and a half hour workshop. So, um, normally what we do in workshops is that everybody can you know, log in on a test site and can try out the things that we are talking about, but that takes a lot of time. Uh, and so we just don't have time today to do that. But I still want to encourage you to actually, you know, log in and look at some of the things. Obviously, you, sh you maybe shouldn't create a trial today on cassava base. <laughs> um, but you can, you can go and look at the features and you can click around on the site. Um, so that's good. If you don't have an account, if somebody needs an account, then uh, let us know and we, we can create one. So is there any other um, things we need to say in the beginning or? And maybe for people who just arrived this morning for the YAM conference, uh, maybe I should point out that the bathrooms are that way, <laughs> that door there on the, on the on the right hand side of the room. Um, okay, so um, I wanna briefly talk about uh, some of the basic um, um, things about breed base and cassava base and yam base. And the first, the first thing, why are we doing this? Uh, it's kind of a lot of work to uh, use a database, um, at least initially, and it gets it ma makes things much easier uh, once you're uh, comfortable with it and you have all your data in there. Uh, but I think there are some some of the purposes are you know you want to really using a database you improve your data quality um, and and you use these systems such as the phenotype co collection tools and the barcodes and so forth all help you with that. Um, and you can also um, integrate diverse data types that uh, otherwise would live in separate kind of spaces and you can easily integrate them together and analyze them together. So that's another, uh, another good point. Uh, and of course that in the end simplifies the data analysis because you have all, all your data there and all your data is integrated in the same you know, in identifier spaces and so forth. And I think another important thing is uh, you maintain a record for, for future breeding and for future breeders who will join uh, your breeding program. And uh, you can just point to the database and say, all the data is there. And that's a very nice thing um, to do. So uh, as I usually show this slide, um, we are trying to in implement a, a digital ecosystem where everything is digital, uh, which is the maximum data quality that you can have. Uh, you know, you create the fields in the database, it helps you and we, we'll see, uh, Prasad will show how that works. Uh, and you then, you know, usually barcode label the field and you use these uh, tools such as the field book uh, to phenotype and can read the barcodes and makes this a, a very, um, um, a very uh, um, high quality data collection process. Then you can run your analysis in, in the database and then you can uh, manage um, 
uh, your crosses and so forth, and let's make your selections. And again, there's and, and in these different operations, there are different types of tablet apps that will help you collect data in field just for crossing or for uh, collection of uh, genotyping samples and so forth. And we'll we'll go through that. So just very briefly, how is data organized into prebase, prebase managed for all these data? And um, the, the simple answer is, uh, you know, in the back end of Breedbase is a relational database. It's called Postgres. It's a very um, widely used open source relational database. Uh, and these relational databases store the data in so-called tables. And in the tables, it contains so-called normalized data. Uh, so there's only one data type per table. Um, which is different from non-normalized table, which would be, for example, an Excel sheet would be not normalized. Um, and so these tables have relationships uh, among each other, uh, and that's called the database schema. Uh, and to, to get a, in information, the full information of the database, you have to join these tables together with so-called uh, queries. And, and it's uh, done in a language called SQL. Um, and these, these table relationships define the schema, and, and we use a schema, or we loosely use a schema that is called the Chado schema. If you're interested, there's a paper uh, about it, and this is the reference. So this, this is how essentially the data is stored. And so this is just uh, an example of some of the tables in the Chado schema uh, called the natural diversity module, uh, where most of the breeding data resides. So you see that it's quite complex. Um, and that's one of the challenges of, of breeding databases is that breeding data is quite complex. So when you go to a, a breed base site, you will see that there's a menu bar on top of every page. And the menu bar there are usually, um, it, it varies a little bit from site to site and this can be customized. Uh, but usually uh, these three menus are present. There's a search menu where you can do all the searching. Um, there's a manage menu where you can manage data, for example, create new field trials or create a genotyping plane or uh, upload accessions. And then there's an analyze, an analyze menu where you can do your analysis. And so um, I'll briefly talk about um, a few of the managing um, um, features here uh, one is user roles and one is locations and i think the rest is essentially covered by um or some selected other ones not everything but uh, are are, are um, presented by prasad so of course the data is it's web-based so everybody in the world can actually access this site uh, and so that we don't have random people contributing data um you have to log in right um and, and so um, you will see that most pages are protected by a, a login. Um, if you have an account, you log in. Um, you will see that on the top right bar of the, of the toolbar is this login button. And when you log in, it will change to this, to this uh, part. And so you have actually three buttons here. Uh, one is a button that goes to your personal page, to your profile page, uh, and you can you know, um, do some settings there. Um, you have a lists uh, button that brings you to the list manager. And you also have a calendar function um, that will show you certain things that you should do uh, in your breeding program. If you, for example, create a trial, it will show you uh, the planting and the harvest dates and so forth on the calendar. But it's an underused or underdeveloped resource. I would say we should develop that much more uh, the calendar function. So now you're logged in, and now what can you do? Um, and that's determined by uh, what kind of roles are associated to your account. So internally, the database keeps track, of course, of every account, and it keeps track of what each user can do. Obviously, some people want to just download data and analyze it. They need different permissions than somebody who wants to upload data. Um, and so, so these different roles define what, what a user can do. And uh, common roles are uh, 
the, the kind of the highest is as curator, they, they can do anything. They can change all the data, delete all the data, um, delete other users' data. So there are very few curators in the database. Um, the submitter can add new data and edit and delete objects that they themselves have submitted. Uh, and then there's the user role, uh, and they can only view data in the database. They cannot uh, upload or change any data. And in addition, there are some what we call the breeding program role. So if you're associated with a breeding program, you have an additional role associated with your account, and it allows you to do certain things um, in, in, for data of that breeding program. And so uh, I showed you the manage program before, and here it is again, and you see that the first manage um, item is user roles. And if you choose that, you will see this page here. And um, you see each user and the role that that user has. Um, and, and so what, what you can do is you can actually, if you're a curator, if your account has a curator role, you can actually manage this uh, information. If you don't, if you're not a curator, you, you can only view this uh, uh, role um, data. And so uh, if, if you're a curator, you get additional buttons. You can, for example, click on, on the uh, X here, and I could remove the submitter role from this user so th this user could not submit any information anymore. Um, if I click on this plus sign, then uh, I can add a new role for that user if I'm a, if I'm a curator, right? Only the curator can do that. And so uh, a little window will pop up, and you can choose the role. and um, when you choose the role, you know, for example, here I added IITA plantain to this user here. And uh, now I'm also part of that uh, breeding program. You can also delete a role when you click on the, um, in, on the X here, and it will just remove that role again. So let's briefly go to the, to the search menu and, and talk about searching very briefly. Um, so the search menu is on every page. It's usually the leftmost menu uh, in the toolbar. Uh, and you see that they have a lot of different items that you can search, kind of every data type in the database has its own search. Uh, so you can search accessions and plots. You can search organisms. So some databases have actually are multi-species. For example, YAM, right, has many species, uh, whereas, um, whereas the cassava database has uh, only a few species. Um, you can search uh, progenies and crosses. Uh, you can search field trials by name and by breeding program and so forth. And you can search uh, genotyping plates and projects, protocols, and so forth. Then we have a trait search, uh, a marker search, and an image search. And finally, you can search also people in the database, other users. So the searches were, work really all the same way. It's very simple. It's very standard on the web. Yeah, it works like you would expect from any website. You come to an input form. You can enter your search uh, criteria. Uh, you click on search. And some searches, we have advanced um, and parameters that you can uh, also specify. And they are usually you know, they're specific to every search. Uh, and then you get a table with results. Uh, and in that results table, you have links. You can click on a link, and you get to the detailed page of that, um, of that data type. For example, uh, in the accession search, you get to the accession detail page. And you see all the information that is associated with that, that entry, that accession. So, so all, all the searches work really like that, except one search, which is the so-called search wizard. Uh, and the search wizard is, is, is really special, and, and I think it's extremely powerful and, um, and a really nice feature of, of uh, BreedBase, if, if I may say so myself. <laughs> um, and so what the wizard does, it um, views the data in the database as a cube, as a essentially n-dimensional cube. It actually allows you to, to uh, specify four dimensions in the current implementation. And you, you, you imagine the breeding data is in this cube, and along uh, the edges of the, of the cube are the different um, factors that are in the database. For example, the years and the, 
locations and the breeding programs, the traits, and so forth. And, and conceptually, this forms a cube. And the, um, the wizard, as we'll see, allows you to specify um, entries along those, or entities along those uh, dimensions. And um, when you do that on, on several dimensions, you, you get kind of this um, um, data um, intersect in the queue, right? And you can then work with this, with, with this data set. You can make very precise data sets. And I, I guess it sounds super complicated, right? No, is it complicated? To me, it seems that when I listen to myself that it, it sounds complicated, but maybe it isn't. It's not, okay, good. And so the way these dimensions look like uh, on, the, on the wizard is they're just columns, right? And I, uh, on the top um, of each column, I can select the data type and I start at the left and I've specified the first dimension. And uh, for example, uh, you know, I can click on it and select the dimension. And here I selected locations and it will give me all the dimensions, um, uh, sorry, all the, the entities in that dimension. And I can click on this uh, green button and I can select the dimension, the, the entities I'm interested in. For example, I may be interested in two locations, Arusha and Kawanda. And then I can go through all the other columns and select other parameters. And for example, here I did that. And I, the next thing I selected was years. And then it shows me all the years uh, that are in the database. But this is already an intersect. The only years are shown that have data that is also associated with Arusha and Kawanda, okay? Uh, then I can select two years and I selected two, 216 and 218, and then I selected accessions, uh, and it shows me all the accessions in the database uh, that have data in 2016 and 2018, as well as Arusha and Kawanda, okay? Then I selected a few accessions, and then I selected traits, and so forth. You see how, how this works, right? So, so this is a tool, and I think in, in the next gen meeting, we have seen actually a few slides where people illustrated a point about their data using the wizard, and that's really great. I, I love that. Um, so you can easily, for example, display all, all the accessions that were used uh, in a given year, in a given location, or in several years in several locations, or uh, you can easily figure out what traits were measured uh, in 2017 by, you know, different breeding programs, for example. So it's a really um, amazing tool. So I want to briefly talk about lists, um, which also um, are integrated in, in, in the wizard, actually. We'll see later. Uh, but when you click on this um, list button that um, I mentioned before, when you log in, your toolbar changes and you get you get on the upper right hand uh, corner of the toolbar, you, you get these buttons and one is the list button. And so here you can actually manage lists of entities, right? For example, uh, I may need a list of accessions um, to design a trial. Uh, I can go to the list manager and click on um, new list uh, and I can enter accessions. Uh, I can give it a name, um, I can give it a type, I say th this is a list of accessions, and then I can enter accession names in the list by pasting them uh, in this field, and now I have a list of accessions, and I can click on validate, uh, there's a validate button, um, and it will check that all the lists, uh, all the items in the list are actually in the database. And so here, I click the validate button and it says, this list passed validation, so it's a, it's a good list. All the, all the things I typed are actually accessions in the database. Um, and so, so sometimes um, I can add things. For example, here I added a new accession called my new accession, but it, it's not in the database actually, right? And if I then click validate again, uh, it will actually tell me that this is something that's not in the database. Uh, so I can actually not use this list to design a trial, right? Because it contains identifiers that 
correspond to nothing in the database. So the database doesn't know about it. It cannot put it uh, in a randomization for a new trial. And it says, well, this accession is not present, uh, but it gives me the option if I click this uh, button here to add this uh, new accession directly to the database. There's other errors that can occur. For example, you enter the name, but it has a mismatched case. Uh, so the case is different in the database than what you enter. Uh, and we try to, you know, you should always maintain the same case as well as the same name. And so you can fix that. Uh, you can just say adjust case and the case, you know, it will be uh, in your list will be exactly the same as it's in the database and so forth. And there, there's, there's other, other little issues and this, this helps to resolve these issues, right? And so, so now what does that have to do with the search wizard? Well, in the search wizard, you can actually, each selection that you make in any dimension here, you can actually store that in a list. So if I made this selection of two locations, I can say, you know, my two favorite locations, I create a list of locations uh, and it will create the list. Uh, you can then go to the list manager and look at these lists uh, and change them if you want or very, I mean, they will always verify when you create them through the, uh, through the wizard because obviously these items are all in the database, right? Uh, and so that's a very simple way to create a list. For example, if you need um, to create another trial uh, and it's a, uh, mostly of accessions that you have used in another trial, you can just go to the wizard, select that trial, select accessions, and copy those uh, accessions that you get there to a list and remove maybe the ones that you don't need and add the ones that, uh, that you want to add. And then you can go on to design the trial and we'll see how that works uh, uh, in Prasad's talk. So here, um, if I want to create this list, I just click on, um, new list, and then um, it, it tells me that two, two items were uh, added to the, what I call the new super list um, so of two locations. The other thing uh, that you can do with the, the wizard is you can actually um, store the, the global information that you selected, right? So the list just store what I selected in each dimension, but all the dimensions and all these selections, if the, this is intersect of data, right, that uh, we talked about. And um, it turns very useful to be able to store that and to be able to reuse that uh, specification of the data set for your analysis. For example, if I would like to do um, a genomic prediction, I want to maybe select things that have a certain genotype, a certain phenotype, uh, and um, maybe used in certain locations. Uh, and I can then store that selection. And uh, when I go to the SolGS tool, I can just select that data set that I stored uh, here. And so we call these, um, these things data sets. Um, this is not a very good name, but um, those represent the intersect of, uh, of one view here of the of the wizard uh, and you can similar to lists you can just uh, create a new name and click uh, create and it will store that that data set um, in the in the database and here you know it's when i click uh, create it says i store a new data set and it contains two breeding programs one year and two trials which is what we we selected so this the selected things are the things that are in the lower part with the um, the red X, um, and so that's that's what what was stored. So it stores only this metadata actually. And you can also load a data set onto the wizard that you stored before, and it will then redisplay your selections that correspond to that data set. So here I've selected another data set, I think. Um, so what you can do then when you have these selections, there are certain queries that you can do right on the wizard, but there are so many, you know, we could put actually every tool that we create, we could put a, a link here, but this would be a very busy page. So that's why you can store the data set and load it in some other tools. And I guess um, Isaac will show how that works later on. Um, 
but you can you can download, for example, all related genotypic data, uh, trial metadata, or trial phenotypes directly from this from this tool, and it will correspond to that selection. Okay, that didn't come out well. Um, I want to talk about the manage menu, um, and um, so the the second thing after in the manage menu. Uh, unfortunately, this slide didn't come out well, but the second thing was breeding programs. Um, and we talked about user management. And so the next thing is, is uh, managing breeding programs. And so you can add and remove breeding programs on that page. It's very simple. Uh, and so you have to be careful. Don't remove breeding programs. You can only, I think only curators can do that. But um, sometimes it has happened that people accidentally remove them. And that's, that's, uh, then all the trials that are associated with those breeding programs become unassociated in the database, and you have to manually reassociate them. So it's a little bit of a uh, little annoying. Um, so here I have a button add a new program. Here to delete it is um, so, uh, is the clicking on this X, and if you want to see the breeding program details, you just click on the name. And that, that's what you see. So this brings you to the breeding uh, program detail page and all the data that you have collected is listed there. All the trials, all the genotyping plates, uh, or everything. Then the next, um, and again, the, the menus unfortunately <laughs> become a little bit small here, um, but um, the, uh, the next um, item on the manage menu is locations. Of course, locations are important because they, you know, determine uh, or they represent where you create the trials. Uh, and so here is a view from 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 Musabase. So all these slides are from Musabase because uh, we gave a workshop in Musabase uh, earlier in the year. Um, and uh, so on on this, um, if you go to the manage menu and you go to manage locations, uh, you get to this page. And you see all your breeding locations uh, as a table format and as a map format. Here is the, the map is shown, and you see little flags where your locations are uh, in the database. And uh, you can actually click on these and get more information. Or if you uh, click somewhere in the map, you actually create a new location. So you can, you can actually zoom in in this map, and you can be pretty precise uh, where, where you create uh, your location. So here I clicked on, a, on one of these little flags and you see that this is the location of Arusha and it has uh, 39 trials in the database. And it gives me the option to uh, edit or delete um, this location. And again, you have always have to be super careful with deletion. <laughs> and this is just the table format of the locations. You can, you can um, also upload them in bulk. Uh, you can add locations one by one using the map, but that's a little tedious if you, if you have lots of locations to add. So um, you, can, you can do this and you can upload an Excel sheet um, with, a, with a certain format. Um, and um, you know, they will then all be loaded and, and, and shown on the map. So the next, um, the next um, uh, item in the, access, uh, in the manage menu is accessions. Um, and so um, you, ha you have to manage the accessions very carefully in the database, right? Because you have to have um, a well curated list of accessions. Um, you shouldn't have any duplicated accessions in the database. You shouldn't have um, two names that are the same for two different accessions. Um, so, so it has to be very, very, uh, very clean so that the database really knows what you're referring to. And so the accessions have to have a unique name. They can have synonyms that are not unique, um, but you should always work with the so-called unique name, which is the primary name of the accession. Um, and, and that actually sounds very simple, but it's actually quite, you know, it's quite challenging to do that uh, when you have 500,000 accessions in the database like, like cassava base. Um, and I think 70,000 in, uh, in YAM base, that's, those are big numbers and they're very hard to, you know, for one person to have, uh, to know about. So you have to be very, very careful. And so the database helps you to avoid some of these problems, like, uh, you know, 
when you upload new accessions with the manage accession feature, you will actually compare uh, and try to find similar names in the database and tell you, well, that name actually is already in the database or a similar name is already in the database. So be careful about that. Maybe don't add that. <laughs> um, and so you have to, you have to be very careful when, when you do that. And so there, there's two ways to add accessions. One is just using a list. So you can create a list as I've shown you. You go to the list manager and you create a list. And obviously all the accessions in the list when you click validate, as I've shown you, they should not be in the database. So that's the only time when you don't want it to be in the database. Uh, and then you can, you can select the list here and click uh, add and it, it will create accessions of that name. Um, the other, the other method is to upload a file. And if you have a lot of metadata about the accessions, such, you know, you, you can, a lot of breeding programs keep a lot of attributes for accessions, such as maybe in, in banana, the ploidy level is really important, or um, maybe the origin of the accession or where it came from, or uh, what kind of market segment this accession was used in or something like that. Uh, and you can do that using a file and you can get all these metadata in, into the database as well. Um, and so the, I think this is actually my last slide. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost on time. <laughs> um, you can upload pedigrees uh, to the database um, and that's also on the manage accession page and the uh, file format is very simple. It's a, it's a CSV file. Uh, and you just say prog progeny name, female parent accession and male parent accession, and you can um, optionally specify a type. Uh, and this will create the connections in the database for, uh, for the pedigree. Um, but all these accessions have to already be in the database. It will not add anything. You, you have to upload all the accessions in, separately uh, in, in the other uh, process. And so now, uh, we're moving on, um, and I think at this point, uh, Prasad will take over, right? So I'm, I will stop sharing, and um, Prasad, you can share. Yeah. C could you see my screen, Lucas? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Prasad Peteti. I'm working as a data manager in uh, IIT headquarters in Cassava Breeding Unit. Um, so sorry, I could not join the meeting because like of a family emergency, but thank God uh, as things are getting normal now. So thanks, Lucas, for the wonderful introduction about uh, breed base. So I will, I will walk you through some of the important functionalities on breed base, like mainly uh, as Lucas mentioned, like managing things. Okay, let's get started. So let's start with crossing trials. Okay, so what I will do is I will just give you some introduction about like what things are, and then I will take you through the, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take you through the demonstration so that it will get uh, things clear. Actually normal, uh, normal workshops we always try to allow users to uh, follow us and then like we will we will give us some exercise so that like they can also practice along with us and uh, so because of the time constant we can't do that so i will i'll tell the like uh, uh, give some introduction about like through presentation and then i will try to go through the demonstration either using cassava base or yam base okay so coming to the crossing trials and also the using intercross. So let uh, actually, I need to thank Tetima for, from BTI for working on this, uh, which is a very important functionality and uh, making it very so simple and very user friendly. So the breed base captures different types of crossing data, like parental information, the cross types, field crossing data, seed lots and progenies and etc. So all this uh, data are related to each cross is linked to a unique identifier and we call it as a uh, cross unique ID. Okay, so breed base provides a several levels of organization. So several crosses from same crossing block or 
or crosses done in same year or crosses having same breeding objective can be grouped together and we can uh, and in in what we call it as a crossing experiment okay so user can add the crosses either one by one or like if there are not many crosses or he can choose to use a template to upload a set of crosses in bulk okay so then um, once the crosses are added then he can start updating the more crossing information like if he wanted to uh, uh, choose like to add more information about plant or plant uh, plot where he brought these crosses were performed or you are targeting your parent like what is the target trait you are focusing on all those information can be added later and also you can add like field crossing information like how many number of flowers has been generated using that uh, from that cross or number of fruits or number of uh, seeds that are produced that by the individual cross okay so and uh, additionally this uh, crossing page also allows you to generate the parent and wish list uh, the files that can be used for crossing data collection using intercross, which I will show you in my next slides. Okay, so uh, this is where actually you can start. Uh, you can go from manage to crosses. Uh, there you can see like uh, after you create a crossing experiment. I hope like this is visible for everyone. So these are all the details like for each crossing experiment you can get. Okay, so you can get like a complete crossing details and you can manage uh, intercross by downloading or uh, uploading your intercross files here. You can use like, uh, 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 you can view or add or edit like crosses in the experiment or you can get like more information, like more parental information, as I mentioned from which particular plot and all that stuff. Anyway, so from here, actually, maybe let me uh, take you to the, the, the live site. So either we can use as Lucas mentioned, we, we can use cassava base or cassava test site. So I will prefer test site because in case if I'm adding, I'm not adding it to the real uh, real data. Okay, so, so as I mentioned, you can go from manage, let me increase my font. So you can go from manage. So first of all, you need to be logged in. So Lucas was mentioning that some of the functionalities you can perform only when you're logged in. So in case if you're not logged in, you need to just register yourself and give an email ID. So you'll get a link to the email. So once you uh, uh, click on that link, you are logged in. So your account is activated and you can start logging. Okay, so once you're logged in, so you need to go to manage menu and under that you can see crosses. Okay, so if you click on the crosses, as I said, like uh, everything deals with a new crossing experiment. So in case if you don't have crossing experiment, this is the button like we can, you can click to, to add the, let me try. To, I don't know whether I have. Lucas, is there a way I can, I can write? You could write on the, on the, yeah, anyway, like uh, maybe I let me use my screen uh, cursor itself. It, I don't uh, think so. Yeah, sorry. Okay. okay, no problem. Anyway, so we can add like this is the crossing experiment in case if you are adding a new crossing experiment, maybe you are looking for a particular location or a particular object you have, you can start your crossing experiment and you select your breeding program in which you wanted to put your crossing experiment and you can start adding your crosses into that experiment. Okay, for now it's similar to your uh, trials page or something. So you have like uh, IATA and under that I have like West Africa and I have like 2015 crosses. So within Ibadan, so these are the, these are my crossing experiments. So let me try to increase. So these are my crossing. So let me open one of the crossing experiment. Okay, so these are the details of my crosses, like uh, within the crossing, within this crossing experiment, it tells me which year, which location, what is the purpose of that and all that information. So beneath that, I have a manage crosses, where a uh, manage intercross, where I mentioned that you can, you can add, uh, like you can download or uh, upload your uh, data that have been collected using intercross, which I'm going to explain after this. So, so this is how like, uh, if, you, if you just like uh, uh, click on this plus button, you'll, you'll see like uh, it has opened up and then you can see download parents, download switch list and upload intercross, okay? So whatever you have downloaded, so you can see that like uh, that data will be available. So let me try to do that quickly. So 
I can, so uh, Lucas was mentioning about list. So list is like a group of unique identifiers, either it can be a list of accessions or list of locations or years or anything. So for me, I wanted to use list of uh, female parents or list of male parents. So I have created a list of accessions. Maybe I'll use my list as female and I'll choose like my list as uh, male. And then I can just click on download so that like it creates me a file uh, that can be used in the intercross uh, to use as a parent in my uh, in my um, in my data collection for crossing. So you could see that this is the code ID that has generated it. Let me increase it a bit. So it, this is the name of my accession which I wanted to use either as a female or male. So sex zero means it is a female, and I have collected another set of which will be my male. So it, in case if you want the same clone to be male and female, you can also do that by giving zero and one. So this is how like you can generate your parent file and also you can generate your wish list. Okay, I'll explain you what is this wish list, but like uh, 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 when, when the time comes. Okay, so then uh, you can even upload your data. Once you finish your collecting your uh, in, uh, data from the intercross, you can upload. So the next thing is like, uh, once you have uploaded your data, um, let me choose another file where I can find the data. So I can, I have just shown you manage cross intercross. So now I'm moving to crosses in this experiment. If I wanted to see what are my crosses in this experiment, I can go and look and I can see, I have like around 715 crosses that I've made in this crossing experiment. I, it, it gives me the complete information, like what is my cross unique ID, which I told you like for each female and male, we have a unique cross unique uh, cross unique ID. And this is my cross combination. And it will tell me what cross type it is, what is my female parent and what is my male parent. And even you can add more information about like which plot you have collected this female and male and which plant you have collected. It. So all this information you can get on and you can even have a link to the particular accession to get complete details of that accession even like pedigrees, which trial it has been used, what is the performance, how, how, how evaluation data is there, if there is any genotyping, all the details can be done there. Okay, and you can also select them and also as, as a uh, list also. So that is about like what are the number of, how, how, how many crosses are there and what are the details. And if you want more information, you can go to like, uh, so as I mentioned, if you want like, okay, so this cross was made and uh, the focus of the female was this and focus of the male trait was this. So suppose like, I want this to be like a biofortified versus maybe like a, a high dry matter material or something. So you can also upload the details and like that can be done using this particular button. So there is a small template like a sheet like that that needs. So these are your uh, unique ID. And along with that, you can put like one of these uh, focus traits, or if you know only female or male, or if you know source trials, you can all, or what is the objective, you can put all this information and upload it so that like you can get all the information in, in this uh, crossing. Okay, that is about like uh, parent information. Then I said like you can also upload, uh, get the information about the field crossing data. So for a particular cross, how many number of uh, bags were used or how many number of flowers it has been produced and how many number of fruits and seeds it has been generated from that particular cross. So for each cross, I can get the complete information once it has been and, and even like pollination date and all that stuff. So later on, like you can even uh, use, so once I have like this many seeds, so you can easily manage your seed information even on cassava base or breed base now. So we have like a seed lot so you can upload like a seed lot information. So you know that like uh, you can add a seed lot for each cross. So whether it has been uh, moved to the seedling nursery stage or you have given it to any particular uh, uh, national partner or like any breeding program, you have, you have given your seeds to how they are moved. So you can track all that stuff uh, using your seed lot info. Okay, so then like uh, once you have uh, moved it to a particular uh, nursery or something and you have your progenies there and you know how many progenies have been uh, uh, germinated. So all that information you can you can put in under the progeny name and once the progenies are there, in case if you wanted to name it. So normally in Kasava, when we it comes to the clonal evaluation, we, we give a clone name or a family name to that so that that you can you can do it here. Okay, so you, you have like a, a particular templates, which allows you to upload that into the database. 
okay so all these things can be easily done using a, a simple template and and it's very uh, uh straightforward and uh, and you you can even link this crosses to any particular trial so that like you know like so whether you have moved this particular process to any trial or you have picked up those things from a particular trial or something so you have you have have the uh, trial linkage page here and in case if if uh, by by mistake you have done some uh, crosses or you wanted to delete them this is the place where you can delete uh, i think like only curator has uh, is allowed to delete this crosses okay so you can even delete some crosses or you can delete the complete crossing experiment okay so this is all about uh, crossing that has been so and it is uh, it is uh, uh, Tetima who has uh, worked on this and uh, uh, she has done a good job and it can be used for any crop uh, it's like very generic uh, templates so it can be used by any any particular uh, uh, crop or even like any seed crops can be used uh, can can use this uh, functionality so that is all about uh, the crossing details uh, so now moving to intercross app so intercross app is mainly uh, this is also developed by uh, trevor from kansas state university this is mainly the target of uh, the intercross is to manage or track the individual crosses okay so um, so the uh, the main uh, it's a it's a very simple app and it has been uh, developed two years back and like two years, uh, three years back, I think like two or three years back. So we have tested it in Ibadan and Hawaii. It's working fine. So last year we, were, we managed to uh, implement uh, this intercross in both Ibadan and Ubiaja, which are our main uh, hybridization locations and it's working perfectly fine. So, and, and we have even like uh, demonstrated this to other uh, other crops like Yam and Musa and they were, uh, they were also like uh, uh, tempting to move to intercross. So it's a very simple app and it can be used, used by any, any crop, not only, uh, not specific to any particular crop. So basically what it allows you is to, to enter your female ID. And once you have your female, then you enter your male and you associate uh, either you generate your cross ID or like there are three or four ways you can generate your cross ID. You can, you can use like unique identifier or you can use a pattern. So it will take care of the pattern in case like if only one or two persons are dealing with uh, taking the data so they can use a particular pattern or you can even leave it as none and use your own cross ID, uh, pre-generated cross ID also that is possible. So that is uh, once your cross cross is generated so once you have female enter your female id male id and you have inputted your cross id your cross is generated and you could see that one here so this is a female male and uh, you can know like the details when that cross was made and who is the person who made that cross along with the cross id so you can use barcode labels uh, in case if you have barcode labels for female and male parent you can use that and you can even use the barcode for cross ids which we have implemented uh, this year uh, on last year. So it, which worked very fine. So uh, once you have the cross, you can start collecting your more data, like, uh, in, uh, like other things, like a number of flowers, number of fruits and all the other information. And you can also print your barcodes, uh, like in case if you wanted to print your uh, cross ID or female parent or male parent, you can do that even like if you have like a Bluetooth printer. So this is how you can use the intercross. It's very simple. You can install the app going to the Google Play Store. And then like uh, uh, there are optional uh, optional import parents and wishlist, which I just showed you in the crossing uh, crossing uh, manager in, uh, in, in Breedbase. So, but like here, uh, even if you don't do that, you can still go ahead and collect crosses by just entering your female and male parent and giving the cross cross ID. And once you have done that, you can start collecting your crossing information and expo your data. That's as simple as that. So, and in case if you are interested in a particular parents, you wanted to cross this year or like you have already planned. So you can generate your list of parents and using uh, and using that list, you can generate like uh, input files for that can go into uh, that can go into intercross using uh, breed base and also uh, uh, use like already existing uh, parents already in your intercross file. So you can do anyways. So, so but like in case if you, you can still use barcodes, like uh, in case if you wanted to use that. So by default, like it will pick it up from the, from the database, like whatever is a unique name. And this is about the wish grid. So before, before 
planning your crosses you might have a wish list like okay so this particular cross i may need like at least this many minimum number of seeds to be generated this year or maximum i can go up to this one so depending on that like uh, uh, the the people start planning how many plants they need how many flowers they need how many so you have you can have the wish list of number of flowers or number of fruits or number of seeds like per each cross so this female versus this may this particular male i need this many so that is my wish list so after you finish collecting data you can quickly uh, if you have your wish grid already uploaded to intercross so then you can use to check whether how how you are uh, how you you have performed that like whether you have achieved what you wanted to achieve this year crossing or so so all so uh, in uh, so it it indicates like graphically like uh, you visualize uh, using like a different colors whether you have achieved or you have uh, minimum money you have achieved minimum or less than minimum or maximum so before going to the next part do you is anyone have any questions on intercross and uh, cross cross details page or anything or if you want, I, I can quickly. Yes. Any questions? Mm. Or should I should I just quickly demonstrate like how how intercross works? If if there is time, like I can just quickly demonstrate that. Is it okay? okay. I want to know if yeah. there are other mating designs that is in the cassava base uh currently we uh, it's allowed like uh, polycross is allowed and you can have like open type or self or biparental and polycross so currently these are the things like which which are allowed are you looking for any specific because this uh, intercross is is currently like still under development so all your suggestions are still like uh, valid like it can be like taken care okay uh, this is astra um, yes. yeah. my question is um, about the data pollination because in in yam i don't know maybe another crop we cannot make in one day it's like maybe in 10 days so every day we do a uh, pollination so how you modded that information the data? exactly yeah thank you for the question so actually i did not mention but like uh, here we are telling cross id but normally uh, while collecting data what we do is we collect it on bag id so anything you bag is our id so because on the same plant you might have four or five bags for the same cross so you may have female flower and you are brought you brought like male and you are crossing it so our target is like a bag id so in case uh, uh so date of pollination is like uh, when you exactly bagged it so when you are pollinated and bagged it is the date of pollination so the person so it it happens in the field so you you are coming with the with the uh, the, the female once you know like okay female flavor is opening and then you bring the the male pollen and you pollinate and then immediately the person starts using intercross and he 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 counts like which particular which he he note down like which particular uh, female parent it was then and which particular male was there and what is the cross id so he he has that cross id immediately and that particular uh, day when he was pollinated so and after collecting all these things so we we correlate everything together and then you have to sort by female and male so you have like how many number of bags have been generated how many number of sub bags are there for that particular cross so then you can sum up all the bags and you get number of seeds for the particular cross i hope is it clear is it clear asrat Azra doesn't have the microphone anymore. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But I think he says it's fine. Sorry about okay. that. Azra. So I'm trying to connect my. So I can quickly show you how this works.
I don't know why my system is giving problem. Okay. So this is, I think like everyone can see my screen. So I have opened my mobile like uh, using uh, Visor so, so that you can see. So I, I wanted to quickly show you the intercross. So this is the intercross. So here you see, like I need to just give me give a female ID and the cross ID I have already generated. So you can you can use like uh, in the settings you can you can see I have three options to choose like my pattern. I can choose none so that I can choose my own pattern of cross ID or I can choose a particular pattern to add on. Like once I finish my cross, it will add it on, or you can I can choose a unique ID identifier. So let me leave it for the pattern now. So now if I enter like a female parent, so suppose like if I have like TMEB419 or something uh, as my female, I can either type or I can choose my barcode. Sorry for my typing. Okay, I have chosen my female, I have chosen my male, and once I click my uh, uh, cross ID and save, so you could see I have created my cross here. So it shows me like the, this is my female parent, this is my male parent, and this is the time. So I have uh, September 15th, I have generated this cross, and Prasad is the person who have generated, and this is my cross ID. So if I click on this one, it will show me information about the cross and also it allows me to add more information of like uh, how many number of flowers have been generated in that particular cross. So here my cross ID is my bag ID, okay? So I can tell maybe I have like 35 flowers. So tomorrow I can come back and see like may maybe there is another five flowers generator. So I can actually quickly, so even, even after I, I add this one, so I can tomorrow I can come back again and change it again. So I can I can come back tomorrow and I can say, okay, it's 40 now. So I can do that. So I can update the flowers or fruit information. So then I can say, okay, I have like 20 fruits. And then I can say like, uh, it has produced me like maybe like, uh, like around 30 seeds, something like that. Okay, and I can save that one. Okay, so this, this particular, uh, I know like this female and male have this information. So uh, how many number of flowers, fruits and so in case if another cross with the same ID is there with another bag ID, I know that there are two bags with the same cross and I can add up like how many number of seats totally I got it from that particular cross. Okay, so uh, that is all about that. And then like I showed you like uh, the crosses. So this is like, uh, it shows you how many female and male parents have been done and, and you can even like look at how you are performing. So this versus this, whether you have none or you have achieved at least like your minimum or maximum. So this is like cross wish list. Okay. So that is all about intercross. So let me move on to trial creation. So and barcoding. So uh, in 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 breed base, like uh, we can we can create our trials or design a new trial. So in case if you are trying to uh, 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 establish a new trial and you wanted to design your new trial and breed base, like you need the, the main thing you need to have is a list of accessions. So once you have a valid list of accessions and you know which particular design you wanted to create, so you can go ahead and do your design on on uh, on breed base. So, uh, so if this is the workflow which uh, which takes you through each step, like gives you like information about like uh, you need to pr uh, provide some information like trial information, design information. So, uh, in case if you want to link it to other things uh, like whether it is genotype or like uh, crossing you want to use, and also like field map information, how you field looks, how many rows you want, how many columns you want. So all that information, and then if you wanted to use, so each step will take you through each, and, and finally you can design your trial. So you have options to create either a single trial or multi-location trial at once, and you can even choose for a multi-location if you want like same randomization or different randomization for different locations. You can choose all of them. So and create your trial on cassava base or uh, breed base. So 
uh, the other option is suppose you have already created your trial and now you want to upload it to the uh, breed base so that is also possible you can also uh, use a simple template which allows you to put uh, in an excel file so all your design you're already uh, in the field or from your historical uh, trials so you can put them in, in into your excel file and upload into the uh, breed base okay so so that is about trials i can show you quickly how to do that so maybe let me use uh, so for that you need to go to manage field trials and you can as i mentioned this is like upload existing trial but i wanted to design a new trial so this is the workflow which takes you through each and every step so you can quickly go to the next step and you can either choose which breeding program you are wanted to create your trial i can say abuja i can say annual meeting Okay, the trial type, let me, let me say it as a clonal evaluation, then year, then I can choose like a width, length. So these are like some optional fields. So you can even choose like whether you wanted to do it uh, number of plants per plot, uh, and then uh, you can give some description about uh, your, and then here is important, you need to specify which particular acts, uh, list uh, you wanted to use, whether you can, you can even create a, a, a trial with crosses or families or accession. So I'm using my accession. So before I choose, I need I need to know that like I have already created a list of accessions and I have already created a list of checks which I want to use. And then like I can choose and, and it is validated. So then I can choose which design I wanted to use. Okay, so then I will validate the form to get like information to go to the next step. So here is a list like which I wanted to create. So let me see if I have my list so and then i can choose my list of checks okay so then i'll choose like how many number of replications or blocks i need and then i go to the next step this is like linkage page where you can say like which whether your trial will be genotyped or which trial you have picked up your advancing from and whether it will be used in crosses so then i can specify how many number of rows i want so let me say nine. So whether I'll choose, okay, so I can choose a custom plotting name and how my plot should an increment by. Sorry, let me see. I don't remember how many clones I have in that list. So let me actually quickly check that. So if, if anybody wants to try it here, we can we can help if you want to log in and uh, into the test site and um, kind of an I and Lisa can, can help you if you're interested. So how many are very new to this? How many people are new? Twelve into three. Yeah, yeah it should work. Yeah. So it's twelve into three. Oh, sorry. I have I have used a wrong checks. So I can specify whether I want a zigzag type or I can specify number of rows. Ah, what happened? Okay, sorry, something has, let me try in the main site.
if anybody wants to get on the internet, it's username IITA and password 12345. Normally it should, it was working. I don't know why it is not working now. Okay, anyway, so I don't want to, so you can, you can get like a trial and then like you can generate your barcodes and like you can download your layout and all that stuff here. Let me try it one more time. Prasad, so let, Prasad. Uh, yes. What design yeah. are you using? Is it, pardon? What design are you using? Uh, no, RCBD. Because it worked, it worked for me like uh, yesterday. So that's what I'm surprised. <laughs> because yesterday I tried and it worked. Anyway, let me, so let me, uh, So I'm trying to create a list like uh, which exactly like Lucas was mentioning. So I used my name. I created my list. So the main thing you need to do is validate. Always you need to check like uh, the validation whether it passed or not. So let me create one more. So you can either like use either you can use copy paste or you can also type like if you wanted to use so you can even try to Okay, so I can add like accessions one by one or you can choose to copy paste. And the main thing is you need to validate. Okay, it has passed validation. So let me try it on the main set, I can delete it. So now I'm going to the, and then I'm trying to create a design. doesn't matter. Complete block. I validated it and I have my list Prasad accessions and I have my checks Prasad checks and I'm going for three reps. So here I say nine, the serpentine, continue to the next step. Plot prefix is like how you wanted to see your plot name. So it's working in the, I think so there are some issues in the test site, so we will we'll solve it soon. So this is how you can see like your plot looks like. I have 12 clones. This is my rep one. This is my rep two. This is my rep three. In case if you are not having this and you 
say that oh uh, i my 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 design cannot take like up to up to four plots so, so i can quickly go ahead and change like i can go here and like i need full rows instead of nine so you can quickly see that like uh, the design has changed so i don't need to go back and do all the things again i can go to any workflow and i can come back and, and redesign uh, how my plot so see now I, I have like three and it looks okay so in case if you think that oh my randomization is not good my checks are together there is an option for you to re-randomize so you can even click on re-randomize or if you are happy you can just go ahead and confirm your uh, trial okay so that is how you can generate your trial on cassava base so that is all about uh, that so this is the steps like different steps it will take you through okay so next coming to any any questions on trial design so you have like uh, uh, i can show you you can have like uh, several options to to design your trial so you have like complete randomization block augmented alpha lattice or like split plot partially replicated and all these are, are currently available anyone has any questions on trial design if not i can move to the barcodes okay so coming to the barcode to make the uh, so mainly barcoding is to make the data collection more efficient and accurate so to improve the quality uh, how you are collecting data that is very very important now so and 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 also like uh, uh, to eliminate the human errors uh, and the barcodes can be used in different purposes let me show you where we are being using it like we use it in the field we use it in the lab we use it for genotyping plates we use it in for crossing or even in sh facilities we always uh, 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 we can also use them in like uh, envelope seed storing and all that stuff like these are the different areas where we can use barcodes and all of them have been generated or designed on very easy customizable label designer tool on breedbase okay which i am going to show you now so and currently we are using two main uh, barcode labels one is like vlx which is 10 per page and another one is like uh, clp which is a 40 per sticky label okay so which can be easily stick on any plate or lab facility or you can even uh, use it in uh, different uh, areas so as i mentioned label designer which is an in interactive design tool for creating the breeding labels and uh, th the input for uh, designing your labels can come can be coming from either your trials phenotyping trials or genotyping trials or crossing trials or even a list i just created a list so you can use the list of uh, accessions or years or whatever list you want or you can generate a unique identifier if you wanted to use any any particular purpose and then use it to generate your barcodes okay so currently uh, we have options to add text or you can use barcodes both like 1d and 2d so these are the different steps uh, to go and design your labels uh, on on label designer uh, these are the actually like a screenshot of how it looks like so as similar to the trial page it will take you through the different steps of uh, going through the the label designer and you can choose your source where you wanted to which trial or which your process you wanted to print barcode and then you choose like which uh, what is the size of your label and all that stuff and you design like what you wanted to see on the label and finally you you go ahead and print and you download your pdf file so this pdf file can be used any in any area or any purpose or any printer to go and go ahead and design let me try to do that so let me use yam base so i go to manage and i see label designer okay so once uh, so once i select so it also takes me through the different uh, 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 steps like uh, the first is to uh, get the data source second is to label size and then to design your label and then to save and download so my data source i've chosen yam base because it will be so let me pick up like 22 whatever is done like in this year so i have been okay let me quickly pick up like okay so i have seen some trials like coming from uh, 22 so let me pick up one from ikene and then like i'll select whether i wanted to barcode either by using plot or plant basis so let me say i wanted plot basis barcode so then i pick up that 
so here uh, here i need to know what is the size of my label so either it will be like us letter or in case if uh, or a4 in case if you wanted to choose custom you can choose custom so here i am choosing and then you need to specifically specify how much is the size of one label so not like whole page as one label okay so i can choose custom i know my uh, size of the label so which is 8 and a half by 11 inch so i need to convert it into 72 pic pixels so each pixel per inch is like 72 pixels per inch so i have like 8 and a half uh, inches uh, which multiplied by 72 by 612 and my uh, height of the label is 1 inch which is exactly 72 okay so i apply and go next so this is my label which i am going to design so i can add some elements to this so i can add like plot name or plot number so let me add plot name and i choose text and i can choose like size which i wanted to add so so let me choose like uh, 25 or something and then i can choose the like a uh, which font i wanted to go ahead and do it so i will add that plot name so this is my plot name so and i wanted to barcode my plot name then So then I can choose barcode and add these things. Okay, so this is my, so I can choose to add like any other thing. So if I want accession name, I can choose to add accession name. I can choose to add like, uh, this is my accession name. And then like, I can choose like replication. I can even like have cust create custom where I can specify uh, like whether I can choose like rep number Okay, so this is how it looks like and plot number. So I, so it gives you several options for you to choose like what you, how you want to see and you can even put like a, a, a number. So this is how it looks like. So then I add it. So this is how it looks like. This is how I wanted my barcode to be there. So I go to the next step, then have a several uh, settings like uh, depending on how your barcode looks like. So I know that like I don't need, so a number of rows are 10 and one column and I wanted to order by plot number and then I'll click on next. Okay, so then you download your labels, that's it. So this is how you can download your page and then go ahead and print your barcodes. So depending on customize, like you choose like how you wanted to, uh, like is a, the size of the label and like what content you want to see everything like depending on that you you finish your uh, label designer and you go ahead and print them so you download it and like use pdf to to choose to uh, go ahead and download it okay, so once you finish that you collect your data so barcodes are tagged and then like you go and collect your data uh, using a field book app which i'm going to show you and then later once you finish collecting your data you can upload it back to cassava base or breed base to upload uh, we have several options like either you can use a normal spreadsheet like an excel file so you can download like a data collection files as a spreadsheet and use that template to uh, put your data collected back and then upload it back using the phenotyping spreadsheet. If you are using a field book, then you can create your file here. Uh, and then like I'm going to show you uh, other places where you can download and then you can you can go ahead and upload the same thing exported back from the same uh, exported file which Android uh, field book has generated. Okay, so you have even like data collector spreadsheet and all this. So once you upload, you can see that like whoever have uploaded the file, the name, date and time will be, and the username will be here. You can either like uh, look at those things who edited or who added the things to this particular trial. And then you can even either view or download that one. Okay, so that is about the uploads, uploading data. So coming to the, so any questions on uh, label designer? Okay, so let me move on to ontologies. So ontology is like mainly for the traits, like we have a standard uh, uh, way, uh, control vocabulary to describe each trait, which can be as a distinguishable characteristic quality or phenotypic feature. And uh, mainly this, uh, this is uh, uh, for, for uh, standard terminology that can be shared among different researchers. So, uh, 
and also like let me show you so these are the currently like uh, i'm just giving example of cassava trait ontology currently like we have around 419 variables and they are divided into seven groups so this is the approach trait variable method and scale and uh, to upload any new traits so because like we have so many things coming up like uh, quality traits and like even flavoring traits so if you wanted to add new traits there is a uh, submit.rtbbase.org you can submit there and it has a, 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 a streamlined uh, approach so that like they go through several steps and they can contact you back and for uh, getting more information and then once it's uploaded they will give you an ontology id so this is the ontology uh, id for 00c0334 for cassava so it will be different for other so the ontology browser can also be accessed through cassava base or cassava uh, crop ontology.org so you can see like different ontology ids you can get like uh, the method scale and all that information more details you can get it from here so cassava base deals mainly with this ontology id it, it doesn't understand the, the name so it will all the trait will also always already always be piped with the name and, and with the ontology id so so never so you can change the name but never try to change the id so because like only uh, the id is recognized by the database okay so so let me quickly show you the ontology browser So this is the ontology browser. So this is all the traits you can see. So in case if you want looking for any particular trait, you can search for it and you can get like that trait. And if you click on that, you can get the complete information of that particular trait. Okay, so this is how it, it looks like. Okay, so dry matter percentage, what is the synonym? So what, how it has been uh, done and what is the details, everything you can see it there, okay? So coming to the phenotyping, so once we have the data uploaded, so you can see that like, uh, so let me go and show you like, uh, so this particular phenotyping data, who uploaded it, when it was uploaded, we can download or you can delete. So let me show you. So if you go to manage phenotyping, so uh, it will be under each sheet you can see, or you can even like, get it, get the information from here, who uploaded and like, how many files have been uploaded and who have deleted those, or in case if you are by mistake deleted, you can see your obsoleted files also here. So, so you can either view, or you can know like which date it was done and all that stuff, you can get it from here. From each detail space, so, You can get like complete information about phenotyping data. So Isaac will take you through all this stuff like uh, the analysis. And uh, so let me show you quickly, like briefly how it looks like. You can go to a particular experiment. Suppose you write it that is XATA. So you can get complete information about like uh, the phenotyping data. So here you can get phenotyping summary statistics and then like uh, you can know like which particular who uploaded and all that stuff. So those are the phenotyping data available. And then you can see like who uploaded the data, like uh, so you can you can you can see here like who who has done and uh, what are the different uh, data sets like they are uploaded on which date and you can go ahead and download the data. Okay, so you can even upload like additional files, like in case if you wanted to upload images or any particular uh, 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 documents or something, you can do that from here. Okay, so coming to the field book app. So the field book app is mainly used for to collect uh, data from uh, the phenotyping data from your fields. So for this, like mainly, uh, 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 there are 12 custom trait formats like uh, so which uh, and and to collect data and it requires like two things one is like your layout file which i just showed you you can download your layout file once you uploaded your data into cassava base you can download that and the trait file so these two files can be downloaded from cassava base which i wanted to show you quickly uh, before we go to the next step 
Okay, so this is the layout file, which is exactly your plot name, accession, plot number, block, rep, row, and column, how it looks like in the field. The next thing is your trait file. So I, I just specified that like ontology just now. So you can see that sprout count at one month and you have a pipe and the ontology ID. So in case if you wanted to change the sprout count to SPRT1, you can still go ahead and do it, but like you never need to should change this one like a CC C0334002013. So you never need to uh, should change like anything uh, uh, right side to the pipe. So this is the ontology ID which database can understand like it is a sprout count for one month. Okay. So this is the trade file. So these two files you can generate it using the field book app from cassava base. So let me demonstrate like how it, it so let me use yam base. So I go to manage and I go to field book app. Okay, so here you, in case if you don't have a field book software, you can download it here and you can generate, suppose you wanted to generate a layout file, if, in case if you don't find it here, you can just click on new and then you can, you can look at like the trial, uh, you wanted to generate your layout file. Suppose I wanted to do it for 2022, maybe this one. So I'll generate, I can, I can specify the, so this is the file like which you can download. So other advantage, so this is your layout file. Okay, so this is how it displays. Okay, so this is how it displays like uh, exactly the layout file. The second thing, so other advantage of having this one is like uh, it will it will create that file in your, so you, with the date and time, so that like in case until you delete that file, it will be there for you. Okay, so the second file which we need is trade file. So you can generate the trade file from here. So I can click on new. So there are two options. Either you can use a list of trades or you can use uh, uh, the trades already at the, at the list. Directly you can pick up those lists here. So you can pick up like those things using control and give a name. So let me say Prasad underscore workshop underscore traits. So, and then once I select those one, I create my file. So it allows you to download that file. So this is how it looks like, but it's, uh, you can't open that. Like you can try to open it using like a notepad or something word, but it's, it's a little difficult. So you can easily create your, uh, uh, your layout file using Excel, but like you want, you can't create your trade file. So it's always, and it, we don't need to create it every time. So if you have your trade file once, so it can, you can use it for purposes. You can put all your, this is how it looks like. There is a heading with trade format and then you have all your trades here. So these are the trades which I'm going to collect in the field now. Okay, so then, so, and e even the trade file, once you generate it, you can use that trade file. So it will be here or for, forever. So this is how you can generate your input files from, for the field book and go ahead and transfer those things to your field and then start collecting your data. So let me quickly see uh, how much time do I have, uh, Lucas? Um, maybe 10 more minutes. Okay. okay? I have, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So I think like I have, I have only genotyping. So let me actually quickly show uh, the field book app. While, while you're setting this up, uh, I just have a comment that there are snacks in the back and just, we don't have a break. So just feel free to go and grab some snacks and coffee. Okay, so this is my field book. This is the main menu, which, so the, the first one is like fields where I can generate, uh, input my layouts. There is a trade file where I need to add my, I can go ahead and collect. So before doing is like, actually there is a folder structure where I need to put, I copy, I, I downloaded my file. So I need to go ahead and put them into the field book folders. So I can see a field book for folder in my documents. I have like field import and I have like field export and I have my trade folder. So all your field layout should go into the field import. Okay. So, and then the trade files should go into the trade folder. 
Okay, so these are the two things you need to remember. Transfer your file to your phone or tablet and move those files to the uh, these particular folders called field import and also trade files. So once you save that file, once you collect your data and save, it will go into the field export. Okay, so for currently, like I, I moved my file into field import. So let me go ahead and start my uh, field book app. And then I can go here and I can uh, add my, sorry, I can add my local storage and it will automatically go and pick up my uh, layout from the, the file. So at a time you can choose only one field because you are going to have only collect the data from only one particular field at a time. So all the layouts like which I have currently have, I can choose to choose like, okay, so maybe I can choose this one to go ahead and then it will allow me to import and I need to choose like one unique identifier and the primary and secondary identifier, which allows me to uh, go in my field and collect the data. So I have done that so I can I can pick that one I have chosen that and then I go and select my traits also. Let's say like uh, I can add or edit or delete other traits and I can actually move the traits like if I wanted to uh, like uh, see how it so I can even like order by like I can push the, the traits which I want first and then I can remove or add traits I can deselect or select those things and all these stuff are available. So once I have I, I can even add a new trait I can I can specify if if I wanted to do some traits in the field itself I can create a new trait in the field and then I can go ahead and start collecting the data. Okay, so uh, this is how it looks like, like you can go uh, from the plot and then you can go and collect it and you can navigate between your traits by using this green arrow. I can move between different uh, and I can take even pictures. I can uh, uh, record so I can collect the data. I can start doing that and then like I can go to the next plot. So I can go to the next plot either choosing a barcode. I can choose like barcode label. It allows me to collect data using barcodes. So all the stuff is available. Then I can even see like how much, how much data I have collected. So it's a data grid. It shows me like how much data I collected for suppose like I, have, I haven't forgot to collect some data here. So I can just click on that one. So it automatically takes to that particular plot and I can, I can it allowed me to collect the data also. So you can choose uh, either like uh, a numeric format or like a, a range or something to, to choose like your traits to be collected also. Okay, so once you have finished everything, so you go ahead and export your data. And once you export your data, it allows you to even export, uh, save it uh, as a file and also it allows you to send it to, to your WhatsApp or mail. So in case if there is any problem with your phone or tablet, you still have your data backed up, okay? So this is about field book. So let me go back. So, so now coming to the genotyping plates. So genotyping plates, uh, we mainly use this because like to to uh, we had like a challenge to uh, uh, to to keep track of like a content of genotyping plates sent to the genotyping facility, so uh, so mainly we we have this uh, 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 phenotyping genotyping match. So we had in the beginning some challenges uh, to match the genotyping and phenotyping sample as the software that is used for genotyping was not accepting some special characters. So we have to uh, change those things which we have used in phenotyping and, and can. So those that that had uh, as some mismatch and also that's why like we, we wanted to uh, from beginning of phase two, uh, next gen phase two, we have been using genotyping plants and all the breeding programs have been using even the coordinate app so far. Genotyping sample tracking, the coordinate app is the one which we are using. So which is very, very simple app. So this is how uh, the genotyping data collection workflow works. So you create, I just showed you how to create your trial and uh, the, uh, using a list of accessions or something in the database. And then uh, I just showed you how to barcode the uh, label design. So once you have tagged them, so using those barcodes or you manually also, you can use the coordinate app to, uh, to whenever you are going, uh, go ahead and uh, do your sample tracking. Uh, collecting your samples in the field. So you use the field book app to, to know uh, which particular well contains which particular uh, leaf sample coming from plot or plant. So once you have that information, we again upload that information back to cassava base so that like uh, you have exact uh, track of the content uh, that that 
of, it, of that genotyping plate sent to the genotyping facility. Okay, so this is how the genotyping plates looks like. And let me actually quickly show you that. So let me go to cassava base and I go to manage genotyping plates. So here we have been using, I think like since 2015. So we have all the genotyping plates here. So if I come to West Africa, I think 17 onwards. So if you see like uh, we have like a genotyping uh, for every uh, every uh, uh, genomic selection or call it uh, QC markers. So even you can see all this stuff. So let me pick up one uh, genotyping plate to show you. So this is the genotyping plate uh, 001 and you could see like uh, how the plate. So this is a sample that was picked up in this A01 well and you can get information about the I and the plot on the accession in that. So if I click on this particular ID or plot, so it will take me to the uh, particular plot information details page where I can get complete information about my phenotyping of that particular plot and genotyping data. I can go ahead and download both data at the same. So that that uh, because like I have uh, I have the same phenotype and genotype. Now I can I can so I can look at like uh, how it performed phenotypically. And also I can, I can, so, so suppose I wanted to look dry matter. So this is how it looked like. And then I can go ahead and even download my genotyping data from here. Okay, so I can download my genotyping data is from here. Okay, so that is how the genotyping plate works. So coming to the coordinate app, as I mentioned, it is a simple app which allows you to track your samples. Like uh, whenever you are collecting the data, it's you can go ahead and just uh, use this app to, uh, to note down either like manually you can put plot number or you can choose like barcode labels like whatever is already tagged in the field uh, for the plant or plot you can just use that barcode to scan and and collect the data for a particular well okay so uh, so and then like we we uh, so in case if you are using coordinate app we allow you to directly upload your genotyping plates uh, by using coordinate app so let me quickly uh, up, uh, show you the coordinate app and then I think like we are good. Okay, so, so let me show you the coordinate app. Okay, so this is the coordinate app. So I can create like a plate and then and I can do that. Uh, so let me, so I can specify like which particular project I'm working and which particular template I'm using. I can specify a name to that. Okay, let me just quickly show some name. Okay, and which particular leaf sample you are collecting, tissue type you are collecting, and then what is the extraction protocol you are used, who, who is the person like who is collecting the data and all that stuff we can, and which date you are collecting. And once you click next, it will allow you to the place where you can go ahead and collect. So you could see a red uh, uh, box like A1, where I'm collecting my leaf samples. One I'm in, once I'm in the field and collecting my leaf sample in the A1. So I, I, you know that like uh, I can enter, suppose I have picked up the plot uh, from plot number 104. So I just enter plot number 104. So, so that like, okay, so I think let me choose. Okay, so it has entered, let's move to the next one. So now I'm collecting from B1. So I can choose even like barcodes. So let me see if I have any barcodes. So I have some barcode here. Okay, so for example, I'm picking this barcode from this particular bar, uh, barcode just now, which I generated. So I choose to use the barcode now instead of, so I go ahead and scan that one. Sorry. Okay, so it has picked up the barcode. So that is how like the particular plot number has been generated. So in case if you want to go back and if you did the mistake, so you can wanted to change, you can also go ahead and change and edit that one. Okay, so it's possible to do that. So you, so this is how you collect all the sample and then like uh, you go back and just save that one to, to uh, to export that file, okay? So it's a very simple app, coordinate app.
to keep track of like uh, your genotyping sample tracking. So I think like uh, with that, I I have finished. Sorry, it was very quick one. So we have only one hour time. I think like I have, I have taken more than that. So any questions from, from the different things which I have mentioned now? Um, any questions? If not, I, I guess we'll move on. Oh, there's a question. Yes. Um, I'll bring you the microphone. Oh, you have mine. Great. Um, one question. So mm -hmm. one second. Oh, Lucas, my question is to you on the curation process. Yes. Uh, I want to know whether it's at the higher level or at each breeding program you, have, you can have a curator. Yeah, so, so the idea is that there, there are data managers at each location, and they, they're usually the ones who are res responsible for the data and the data upload, and they should do some quality checks uh, before they upload it. Um, we are working actually on a system where you can uh, more easily detect outliers in the data and exclude them before you perform any analysis uh, on the site. But that's not quite ready yet. I, I wanted this to be ready for this meeting, but it, it wasn't. So next time we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Um, in the ontology, we have major traits that, that the traits we directly record, and also we have calculated traits. For instance, we take um, dry matter. So dry matter is uh, derived, uh, I think, from the fresh weight and the dry weight. So how we handle that one when we are? So for, for derived traits, there is a system where you can add a formula to the database, and it can ca calculate uh, a new trait based on two other traits. Um, per trial so that, that's how this can be done so you can this is how like it, it it can work so sorry lucas should i show it yeah yeah if you want to show it yeah so this is uh, where as that like you can uh, composite a new trait so you can pick up like your existing trait here suppose if you wanted to pick up like dry matter so you need to pick up like dry matter and then like uh, choose like how you wanted to divide it or like maybe times or like uh, how you wanted to divide it like weekly or monthly so or like uh, in the morning in the afternoon you wanted to collect these samples so, so you can do it like from going from an and composite a new trait so whenever you compose a new trait the ontology id will be different uh, on that like if you go to analyze analyze sorry ontology browser or even like if you go ahead and look for like uh, search for traits you see like uh, there are both, uh, if you look for traits, you can see both like uh, these are composite traits and also the normal. Uh, so if I if I search for composite traits, so it will be like same trait, but uh, in a different uh, way or like uh, in case if, uh, if you consider CBSD, so they will be doing it on different routes. So maybe like route one, route two, route three, route four, like or they, they wanted to take photograph of each slice. So they will say slice one, slice two, slide two. So you can generate like as many uh, composite traits or uh, uh, how much ever you want. So for example, this is like month. So uh, this is trait for one month and also 10 months, something like that. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank, thank you for start. That's a, a great, yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, so shall we uh, move on to um, Isaac's presentation? Sure, um, I'll just stop my questions. Share. And we, please feel free to, you know, at, at lunch, uh, we are there. I, I think we won't have a huge amount of time for, for answer a uh, question as answer session, but uh, at lunchtime, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know and we, we can talk. Let me see myself. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Prasad. This is amazing. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Isaac uh, Thakle, and I will continue with uh, the statistical tools uh, we have on breed base. So, uh, 
Okay. Um, so, so far uh, uh, we covered the breeding workflow parts from designing a trial, planting, barcoding, and then uh, collecting data and then storing the data in the database. So now what I would do is uh, what, what you can do to present you the statistical tools you can use on the data that you have in the database. So um, so why, why use uh, breed-based to analyze your data? Uh, obviously, you could analyze uh, uh, using your other uh, statistical tools or programs like SAS, or maybe you use GenStat or uh, uh, other uh, programs. Uh, but yeah, why do that instead of using instead of uh, using breed based? Um, many reasons. One is for efficiency. Uh, you gain efficiency if you do all your analysis in the database because uh, uh, all the data types or data points are connected with each other, and the tools are also linked with the data. So. Uh, because of this integration, uh, you save time. Uh, you don't have to sh shuffle data from the database to your Excel and then to your other application, et cetera. Uh, and also, uh, when you do that, it, it means you are doing a lot of things manually again and again, cleaning your data, formatting your data for uh, every uh, statistical program you use. So you don't have to do that. In, in, in breed base, all that is automated. All you have to do is few clicks here and there, and then uh, it is done for you. You save a lot of time. Uh, another reason is yeah, the, the servers uh, uh, that host breed base, whether it is YAM base or cassava base, have more computing power, so things run much faster. Um, also, uh, when you do your analysis in breed base, you, you maintain data integrity. You, you minimize the chance that your data gets changed somehow when you are moving from Excel to one uh, statistical program or other. And also you ensure uh, that every time you run the analysis on a specific data set, the same result would be obtained. And this is because uh, like I said earlier, a lot of the uh, data pre-processing is done in a standard way, and also the algorithms or the statistical methods used are uh, standard. So every time you do your analysis in the database, it you get the same result. It could be now, a week later, it could be you or your colleague, the same result, which is very key. Uh, 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 quality in, in science. Um, the other thing is you can store your data for long term and it, it is secure. Uh, it is easier to share data with uh, your colleagues. So the type of analysis tools uh, I will show you will be broadly uh, uh, tools that can give you an overview of the data, just uh, uh, a way to describe your data. Uh, and also there would be tools you can use to test hypotheses or do uh, predictions. Uh, along the way, I will also give you an impression of uh, uh, what kind of vis visualization there is to, to, to make uh, your uh, uh, data and also results from the analysis more uh, interpretable. So let's start with the tools you can use to explore your data. Um, so by now you know how to get to your trial, uh, uh, trial page. And once you get to your trial uh, detail page, for example, if you just want to know what the data you collected and uploaded to, to the database looks like, you could go to a section
you could go to a section uh, 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 to a section called phenotype summary statistics and if you click on that section uh, you would see you would see a table uh, that uh, will show you all the traits you phenotyped in that trial and for each trait uh, you will see uh, the summary statistics including the average trait value the extreme values the minimum the maximum values uh, you will see also a measure of spread of the, in the data, and also you would know how much uh, complete the the data points are, or how many data points might be missing for each trade. If you want to look at how spread the data is, you can use a histogram, uh, and it will show you. Uh, how much variability there is in the trade data for that trial. Uh, if you want to zoom in into a certain data range and want to know what observation units uh, are uh, have, uh, having these trait uh, values, uh, you can use um, a tool called graphical filtering. And this tool allows you to just select a data range and then you would know the, the observation units where uh, these trait scores are uh, obtained from. You can do that for one trait, or you can do it for a combination of traits. For example, here I'm showing you uh, uh, on, on the left is, I think, fresh, fresh, fresh storage root weight. And on the, on the right is dry matter. So you can select, okay, between this range, for fresh storage weight and between this range uh, for dry matter, and then you get a list of the observations uh, satisfying this criteria. Also, if you want to uh, compare how um, the trait performance uh, of plants that are uh, evaluated across trials is like, you can use uh, uh, a trial comparison tool and it's, it will show you just how yeah, the trait data is related for those clones uh, uh, for, for, uh, between uh, the trials. You can also compare how the data is spread or, uh, or how much variation there is uh, uh, across the trials. Um, if you want to know um, how the traits are related with each other, and this is important uh, to help you focus on what traits uh, uh, to, to emphasize you, maybe your stats, stats, statistical analysis or have an idea what the consequence is uh, when you select for one trait uh, and uh, what consequence it has on another trait. So you can do phenotypic correlation analysis uh, and you would get the output in this heat map, heat map format. And yeah, if you click at any pair of traits, then you will see the correlation coefficient, which tells you the magnitude of uh, the, the relationship and the direction also. If you want to know um, how um, pairs of clones are related with each other or how much homozygosity there might be in a clone. Uh, you can also do kinship uh, and inbreeding analysis. Um, and yeah, you, you get the kinship uh, output again, like in a heat map, heat map format. And, uh, you, and by pointing at any pair of clones, you will get the kinship values. And at, uh, on the diagonals, you will know uh, uh, if there is any inbreeding uh, 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 for a specific clone. And I, I should also point out that all these outputs are down, downloadable. So at the bottom of each plot, there, is, uh, there are links to download the outputs. Um, if you want to know if there is any uh, grouping or 
underlying pattern in a set of clones. Uh, you can also do PCA and, and you would be able to see, uh, for example, if you have clones uh, from different uh, breeding programs, uh, you can see them color coded, co color coded and be able to tell if there is any, any differentiation. Um, if you want to do a more nuanced uh, uh, clustering analysis, uh, you can use uh, hierarchical clustering, and this will show you again how uh, pairs or clusters of clones are related with each other and, and be able to see um, any differentiation again. Um, if, you, if, if you want to partition uh, any set of clones into any number based on similarity, uh, similarities uh, uh, of phenotypic data or genotypic data for that matter, you can use k-means clustering. And basically it allows you uh, to choose uh, in the number of groups or partitions you want to create uh, for that list of clones and uh, what, what uh, data you want to use, phenotype data or genotype data, and then you get uh, the clusters and uh, the, the clones that are similar enough to be in each cluster. So moving on to inferential and predictive analysis tools in the database. Uh, do, you, do you have any questions so far? Okay. Yeah. 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 Can you use the microphone so everybody can hear? Thank you for the presentation. My question is, uh, from the K-means clustering, yeah. I can see the traits yeah. list. Mm -hmm. Can we apply it to other traits like uh, quality traits? Yeah, as long as uh, the traits have uh, data in the database, uh, you can use any, any type of uh, data, as long as it is also quantitative data. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think we, we discussed this problem before. So it's mainly in our practice, um, our data manager uploaded the data to database. Yeah. And uh, me as a breeder, we downloaded the data. The data is not searchable, not to be able to download from the wizard. And also we observe after we download, we uploaded the data, if we, wa we want to analyze the, the data right away, the, the, bar, the bar plot you showed there for different plot, the function does not work. I don't know whether there's any solution now or you are still working on that. Thank you. So you try to use the histogram or bar plot in, in, in the database or out, on your outside the database? So in your presentation, you, so you show just be in the web, in the web page, yeah. Just below the um, phenotype, the phenotypic data, yeah. There is a plot, yeah. We can we can show the data of each plot, right? So there is a kind of bar plot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after we, if if we, if, it, uh, right after we uploaded the data, that function does not work. So this is what we observe. Mm. So, but after a while, that function works. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So the 
Yeah, so there, um, there is some database optimization process going on. Uh, when you load the data to the database, uh, it, there is a step to, yeah, let's say migrate it into the database tables that are more efficient to query. So that process might take a little time. And if you try to view the data in, in the middle of that process, yeah, you might encounter. Maybe one so that it would appear immediately just querying the native tables. So I think we'll, we'll probably change that uh, from uh, according to user input like like yours uh, uh, that you know you should see the data immediately uh, when you upload it. Any more questions? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Um, Thank you for your presentation. Um, just wondering, uh, plans that you have forward for including the non-parametric tests, because most of what I see are the parametric tests in the analysis. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if you if you suggest or you know to us what uh, analysis types you want, we we could ask them. Yeah, I, I think I'll send you the list of the, of the non-parametric tests yeah. that would be interested to see if okay. the grid base. Yeah, yeah, we could ask them. Indeed, all the tests we have are for parameter parametric ones. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna continue um, with the other analysis tools. So. Um, basic uh, test you might want to do uh, on your trial data is, of course, uh, analysis of variance, and you can you can do that uh, just by simply going to the trial page again, and somewhere down on the page there is uh, analysis tools section, and there, uh, yeah, you will have the option to select the track you want to run ANOVA on, and then you would get uh, the classic ANOVA table uh, showing the significance of uh, this, the difference. And also with that, uh, the diagnostic tools to, to check if the model assumptions are met or not, you have to make that judgment yourself. And if you are happy, then uh, you, you can also download uh, the uh, adjusted means uh, for the clones for that specific trait. Uh, if you want, if you want to do um, uh, G by E, if you have uh, an experiment that runs across locations, uh, you can also do. Uh, uh, stability analysis. Uh, this is this was developed by Chris Simoes. Um, there is an implementation of uh, AMI and GG uh, by plot. So this uh, analysis uh, stability tool would generate for you, of course, the G by E uh, ANOVA table, and then you will get. Uh, uh, the uh, clones ranked for their stability uh, across the locations. And you would be also to view uh, uh, the same output in this by plot uh, if you want. Yes. Please, I know that. Uh... There was a time we asked if we can use cassava base to do um, multi-locational uh, um, analysis mm -hmm. on um, maybe uh, running an ANOVA. So 
as of that time, it's it's not yet in um, the server base. I don't know whether you could have fixed it in now. Uh, if if the tool is available, yeah. Oh, there is uh, a tool to do that. Um, maybe the name might be a bit confusing. Uh, it is just called uh, stability analysis tool. So, uh, but it, it does the same uh, uh, analysis. It, it runs for you ANOVA for the multi-location analysis. I mean trials. It's just, uh, it is named stability analysis tool. And it does the G, G by analysis. <clears throat> um, okay, move, moving on. Uh, if you want to, to calculate blobs or blues uh, by fitting your own uh, uh, um, mixed model, there is also a tool for that. Um, it allows you to select what variables you want to fit as random and what as fixed. And even it allows you to add interaction terms and based on your formulation, then uh, the model will run and generate for you the blobs and blues. Um, and you have the extra advantage, you can store the blobs or blues in the database so you can use it uh, in down downstream analysis. Um, if you do that, uh, if you do that for multiple traits, and then you want to calculate selection index index on them, there is also a, uh, an interface that allows you to select uh, the traits you want to combine, and also uh, it allows you the weight or importance you want to associate with uh, every trait. Then you get uh, the index. You can use this also just if you want to use the average, this ar arithmetic average of the traits. Hmm. So for those who are using genomic selection, uh, in, in, uh, there is also uh, a tool for that. It is called SolGS. And this uh, tool allows you basically um, to uh, compose your training uh, data set by combining uh, more than one trials and then use that uh, training data set to uh, build a prediction model. And then once you have a prediction model, then you can use that prediction model to estimate uh, the breeding values for clones that have genotype data only. Um, and Behind the screen, the, the, the tool uh, implements uh, gblop G method uh, as implemented in the rrblop uh, R package. And the prediction accuracy is based on 10 folds uh, cross validation uh, replicated two times. So, to give you an impression how uh, you can do your genomic prediction. Um, so you go to the uh, SolGS homepage, and then you have an option to search for the trials you want to uh, uh, use in your tri training data set. Or if you have already created a data set, like uh, Luca showed you earlier, uh, you can just uh, select that data set and then use it as a training uh, population. Uh, once you have that, um, you would get into a page that looks like this, basically a page that shows information about the training population, uh, some general information about the training population, including how many clones are in the, uh, in the training population, uh, how many traits are phenotyped, and also what genotyping uh, uh, data set uh, you have chosen. Uh, and then you will get a list of the traits. You choose uh, any number of traits. You can just choose one trait or many traits. And then you just build uh, your prediction model. Um, 
after some waiting time, the prediction models would be ready and then you would be like in a page that looks like this. Um, if you want to see in more detail uh, the model output, um, uh, again, there is a, a model uh, uh, detail page and in that page, you will see all the relevant information about the model, including what phenotype data was used, um, uh, what genotype data was used, um, and also uh, you would a measure of the prediction accuracy, and you would see um, uh, a, a plot that shows the relationship between the GBVs and the observed the phenotypes, just another way of uh, uh, assessing uh, the prediction accuracy of the uh, model. Um, and then somewhere uh, uh, at the bottom, if you are happy with the model, you can uh, use it to predict uh, uh, GBVs uh, for uh, uh, any selection candidates. Um, this is just... Uh, uh, to show you, uh, yeah, uh, you, you will also get a, a display of the GBVs from the training population or the selection uh, candidates, and you see it in a histogram uh, plot. And if you point at any bar, then you would see uh, uh, what what clones are in that uh, bar. And this is useful because then you can see. Uh, what clones are performing on the high end, what clones are performing on the low end. So you can just uh, inter inter integrate that here. You can download then the GBVs or you can store the GBVs in the database for later reference or uh, any kind of analysis uh, you want to do. So uh, there are also um, um, many helper tools you can use uh, in this uh, prediction pipeline. Um, for example, if you did prediction for multiple traits, uh, you can look at how related the traits are, how you can uh, 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 calculate the genetic correlation. Um, you can uh, check for genet expected genetic gain in, in, in this uh, uh, box plot format. Um, um, if you want to calculate selection index, um, you can also do that uh, from the pipeline. Uh, and you can also uh, download the selection indices from, from the same page. Um, do you have any question about uh, the genomic prediction tool? I'm not going into detail. Uh, if, you, if you really want to know uh, how to use it or if you have any uh, you know, particular problems, we can also talk about them uh, after the session, but in the interest of time, uh, with apology, I'm, I'm just staying very shallow. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Francis. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Isaac, for the presentation. Uh, mine is not necessarily on the GS. Uh, but you say that we can extract blabs from multi-environmental trial data, but I don't see an option of how to eliminate trials with very low heritabilities before you pull those trials yeah. to analyze them, to extract the blabs which are going to fit in your GS. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you extract those with very low or zero heritabilities. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, if, if, you, um, if you go to that um, trial detail page, 
there is a way to calculate heritabilities. Um, so you can you can use that information, I guess. Um, otherwise, yeah, it is um, it is it is uh, exploring after the fact. Uh, for example, when you did the modeling, you would still see uh, the phenotype data distribution. You can see, for example, if there are outliers or um, uh, or you will get a summary statistics, including uh, the SNP heritability. And so if you are, if you find it not good enough, it is going back and then starting all over. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Isa, for that uh, wonderful presentation. So I just want to ask, um, is there any prospect of adding maybe um, uh, different models for maybe complex G by E, mm -hmm. assuming you have like 40 trials mm -hmm. from different environment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to look at no G by E, mm -hmm. you look at homogeneous, homogeneous um, variant, mm -hmm. you look at maybe like factor analytic model, mm -hmm. but um, I've not seen this in cassava base. So I don't know, maybe there is prospect to add, to add different uh, models. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's a very good point. Um, we just uh, uh, started looking at uh, a package called Summer, and that uh, our package has uh, yeah, uh, uh, functions that could allow uh, to do all these uh, calculations and integrate uh, that information in the modeling. So yeah, in the future, yeah, would would progress towards that. Yeah. I, I have another question, uh, which relates to the previous question um, about trials that turn out to have really bad data in them, and I think. I'm, not, I'm actually not sure what the policy should be for such a trial. Should we label those trials in a certain way in the database? Uh, or should, um, should these trials be deleted from the database? Because I think if the, if the data is bad, it's, you know, it, can have a, it can have a bad effect on downstream analysis. So maybe the better way is to actually delete those trials than, than to keep them. Um, I don't know what, what kind of people think about that. That would be a really an excellent discussion point. If, if people want to, if people have a strong opinion in this room, please uh, let, let us know because uh, I, th I think it's an important, uh, an important subject. Um. Thank you, Lucas. Probably deleting trials might not be a good idea because one trial could have up to several traits, probably up to 20, and probably there's just one, two bad traits. So probably if you find the data is bad, you could get back the trait and you say, hey, um, we're having trouble with this trait, what's up? So probably that particular trait, they could review and improve, and maybe if they can't improve, they could delete. But also, bad data could be a reference for other people for what you want to do going forward. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a good comment. Yeah, it can be trade by trade. So maybe you should delete the trade or maybe you should, yeah. Not, not the entire trial if, if there's good, good trades with good heritabilities in that, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I just didn't see a pipeline for doing some form of uh, association analysis. Probably it's not, I don't know. Is there anything in the prospect for that? I think it will be fun because uh, the database now has both genotype and uh, phenotypes in there. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very timely question. I think yeah. it's the next slide. <clears throat> Any other comments about the quality issue, maybe, if, if people have opinions? Can I, yes. can I, Lucas? 
Yeah, from from online. Out. <laughs> so uh, my comment is like, yeah. So in before doing the analysis, maybe we can put something like on quality. Uh, like okay, so this uh, th suppose like the person has selected a particular trait or something, and like the person will be able to choose whether I can I can add this trial for this particular trait to this analysis or not. Uh, we we can have an option for user to choose. But we can give some hints like, okay, so this is good or bad, something like that. So what you're suggesting is when you upload, for example, trait data, the system would perform a heritability analysis and it would uh, warn the user that, you know, you have zero heritability for this trait. Do you really want to store that? Uh, like maybe maybe for storing it's okay, but like for, for doing analysis, for after like uh, after the after storing while doing analysis or while going advancing or advancing to the next level yeah yeah and we are working actually on a on a feature where you where you can filter um data sets for for outliers and that might you know take care of some of these issues um and it's 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 it will be very nice but i can't unfortunately show it yet did you yeah exactly similar to so I think I really like the the term. Um, I don't know your name, sorry. So yeah, you said it's pipeline. So for data analysis, it's always a pipeline. It's not just one analysis. So I really kind of now, Catabase is very good at you manage the data. So I think we are mature in that side. So hopefully in the future, we can, we can mainly focus on the data analysis um, so we can have all the steps, you know, it has pipeline, it's different steps. So I'm thinking maybe we can have some, some um, separate space. We can extract the child we want to analyze and then we have different steps and uh, based on the, the request of the brilliant team and based on the required of the, of the report for the, for the advancement uh, meetings, and we can have all the steps, the data curation, the data analysis, heritability, blab, gblab. So like the, probably the, something in the, in the galaxy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, so that's a kind of something like that. We have, a, we have all the steps there. So that might be something that helps. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you for that feedback. That sounds like a really, I think, Excellent next step for cassava base to go to and, and make this really, you know, much more user friendly and solid. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's actually this is not easy, I think. So yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. My own comment is um we have any plan for the food quality data to be in the either cassava base or yap base yes so uh we're working with the uh, rtp foods project on adding the traits uh, to the ontologies and then it should be possible to upload the traits and to work with the traits in the database in the same way we have seen with any other trait it's going to be a base on its own. It will, it will be by crop uh, right now. Um, if there's any other need that it shouldn't be by crop, we should talk about that. But currently the idea is by crop. Yeah? It goes, yam data goes to yam base, cassava data goes to cassava base. Okay, shall we continue? I think we have only about five more minutes. Okay, uh, <laughs> so um, next. What I would like to share with you is uh, the JUAS tool um, by Adrian Power. Um, and this tool um, has a user friendly interface that um, all you need is to have created uh, your data set from using the wizard. And once you have that, you just go to the uh, Sol JUAS tool and 
from there you select that data set you want to run GWAS and then uh, um, okay if you if you want to include in the GWAS model um, kinship or PCs uh, you can uh, optionally uh, add them as covariates um, and once you do that you just uh, run the uh, GWAS analysis and then you get the standard outputs the manhattan plot um, indicating uh, the important loci uh, and also uh, a plot a qq plot to help you judge uh, uh, if the model satisfied the uh, assumptions um, so that's it about GWAS. Um, and next i will give you a quick overview of uh, uh, phenotyping using NIRS. Um, so I think the basic thing about using uh, NIRS is that um, um, you do phenotyping as usual for a fraction of your uh, observation units. Could be, I heard uh, in the past days up to 15 to 20 percent of uh, your sample, uh, uh, your observation units, and then you store that in, into the database as usual, uh, and then uh, you do uh, uh, you, you collect uh, reflectance data or nearest data on all the samples. Uh, once you have these two data uh, in the database, uh, then you can use you can train a model uh, to predict the phenotype uh, for all the observation units. And the idea is you, you are saving time, maybe uh, cost, uh, maybe analysis, uh, wet lab analysis complexities. Um, um, so this is basically in text uh, what I should try to point out in the cartoon. Um, the interface is very easy. Uh, um, all you have to do is just, yeah, uh, once you have the NIRS, there is a button to upload the NIRS to the database. And then there is a button uh, to train the model and then another button to predict uh, the phenotypes. It's uh, quite easy. Um, um, another point is you can store uh, the prediction model in the database. So next time you want to use the same prediction model on uh, uh, on on your samples, uh, you can recall uh, that model and do your phenotype prediction. Um, and all this is uh, done by Nick and others. Um, if you have any um, questions, you can direct it to him. Uh, in the meantime, there is also a, a video uh, uh, sh uh, about the whole process on YouTube, on the BreedBase YouTube channel. So if you search for NIRS tools in Cassava Base, in the BreedBase YouTube channel, you will be able to find that video and understand um, the pipeline uh, much better. So. In summary, um, yeah, you can use breed base uh, to to have a bird's eye view of your data in the database, uh, whether it is phenotype or genotype, and you can run uh, predictive and inferential an analysis on your data, um, uh, uh, and hopefully that would result in improved. Uh, efficiency and uh, uh, maintenance of data integrity. Um, and I have been using uh, the word breed base uh, throughout this presentation, but it means for the young people, young base, for the cassava people, cassava base. So if you want to uh, access all these tools I showed you, uh, the young people can go to Yam Base and Kas uh, the Cassava people to Cassava Base. And then you will find most of the tools uh, in the analyze 
Oh, it's not. Okay. Uh, you will find most of the tools in the analyze menu, uh, and you can select yeah the the analysis tool you are interested from that menu. Um, for if you want to do uh, all this analysis or at least some of them on a single trial uh, basis, you can also go directly to the trial detail page and there is a section uh, called analysis tools and then you will find all the all these tools listed there and then you can do uh, your analysis directly from that page. And for most cases, it's, it's just one uh, button click to do the analysis. So I guess uh, this completes the uh, breeding workflow, workflow circle. We are back to the origin. We covered the trial design, penet planting, phenotyping, and data analysis. Um, and with that, uh, I end my presentation. If you have any questions or Lucas, you want to take over? Yes, if there are any questions. Uh... Oh, great. <clears throat> okay. Thanks so much, Isaac. I have just a quick question on the general wide application. In fact, when running the analysis, I don't know if uh, you capture the method used for identification of the certain targeted uh, SNPs, either Benforoni or FDR. And then apart from that, in uh, when you are fitting the model, is yeah. it uh, based on probably uh, the ordinary ordinary viewers without the kinship or the principal component or the population? structure mm -hmm. if you are factoring also those model uh, those uh, covariates in the model is it already in the in database or you need to bring it then if you are bringing it how do you do those things yeah so for the second part yes you can uh, uh, include this covariates the kinship and pca uh, output uh, all you have to do is just opt to include and then the analysis would be done in the background. You don't have to do it beforehand. It's just integrate uh, in the GWAS pipeline. Um, the first question, I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, the first question is just to to define the it, it, it threshold for selecting the, the related SNPs markers, Benforoni oh. or FDR. Yeah, uh, I think um it it is based on default values uh as far as i can tell there is no option but i uh, i can contact uh, adrian okay uh or you can contact him directly yeah, i can speak with him as, as well yeah okay good thank you okay yeah. okay i just want to ask a simple question Independent of the data, the genetic data and other kinds of data, phenotypic data that are uploaded on the breed base, is it possible to uh, import an, uh, an independent data from outside of all these and use the statistical tools in the uh, breed base? In, uh, yeah. Um, basic requirement is the data is in the database. So it has to be in the database. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's easy to import external data into the database as trials, and so you can easily do that and use the tools. Any questions? Maybe is it possible to use like BRAPI tools, uh, Isaac or Lucas, uh, to do that? We can still do that data from other databases, but like using BRAPI tools. Yeah, so so the BRAPI um, interfaces don't expose the uh, actual analysis yet, so we don't. You can't really do that using BRAPI yet. Maybe in the future. Okay. 
So it's five past 12. Uh, I think we have kind of a tight schedule for the lunch. So if you, um, I guess we, we have to break here and, and go to lunch. And uh, thank you so much for, for joining and for all the really good questions and suggestions and feedback. Um, it's been really great. It's been a wonderful session to me. And um, thank you so much. Thank you all. Bye-bye.